Hey everybody, this is Franco, and I'm going to try to make a video that a lot of people have been asking for. This is not an easy video to make, but uh, I'm, I'm done procrastinating. I'm just going to make it do the best I can. So you can see, I have two cats now. I have the older cat, Winston, and I have the newer cat, Tucker. Both of these cats are awesome. I love them both. They're not the same, um, but they're both awesome cats, and I'm glad I have both of them. And that's kind of a fitting segue to the conversation we're about to have. So people have been asking me about the new PM728 VT, the old PM25 MV. People wanted, to, wanted me to do some kind of comparison video. And uh, I often get asked questions about like backlash and the rigidity and things like that. I've been asked some questions of like the dimensional size of the machines, so we can talk about that really quickly. But, uh, but I'll, I'll do my best to address all this. I probably won't answer all your questions, but this is my best shot. So first of all, backlash. We'll talk about backlash. The, all of these machines, you can adjust the gibs, you can adjust the nut on the lead screws. So I, I can tell you, I, I could make this machine have zero backlash if I wanted to. And I could also, if, if the PM25 was still a manual machine, I could adjust that machine to make it have zero backlash. Uh, so that's why when I do these videos, I don't really fixate on backlash because that's something that's really up to the person who owns the machine, whatever your preference is. So if you, you, you could tighten the Gibbs up, you could adjust the, the, the split nuts on all the lead screws, you could make this thing have virtually no backlash, but the, the action of the machine would be really tight. Um, most machinists don't like that. They want it to kind of have a smooth gliding feel. In order to have a smooth gliding feel, you gotta have some clearance, there's gonna be a little backlash. Uh, so that's why I don't really worry about that a whole lot. Um, and that, that's my answer for that, so backlash. Spindle TIR, we already did the video on the spindle run out. Um, very, very good. Spindle run out on this machine is better than the factory spindle run out on the PM25. Uh, I believe this is just a higher quality spindle than the PM25. Both good, right? Just like Tucker and Winston, both great cats. Although Tucker's a little upset right now. Okay, Tucker, hang on. You're not into this? Okay. There you go. Back in the house. So, both good. This has a better spindle in it. Out of the fa from the factory, better spindle. <sighs> Other things that we want to talk about. So this is a bigger machine than PM25. Right, it's a bigger machine. If you come around, camera woman, thank you for being camera woman today. I really appreciate that. If you look at the back of the machine, look at the column. This column, is bigger and wider. So at the base of this column, it's seven inches. And you can see the column is four inches. So that your, your cross section down here is seven inches by four inches, right? And the way it mounts to the, uh, to the base, I'm, I'm, as I recall, the fasteners come up from the bottom. So but you can see it's, it's, a, it's a wider column at the base. If we go over to the other machine, as a point of comparison, and this is going to be a little harder for you to see, but if you just kind of come over here and try to get the camera back here, you'll see this, the width of this column is like four and an eighth. So you don't really, I'm not sure if you can see this, but it's four and an eighth, and the depth of it is about three and a quarter. So, so this column is uh, four and an eighth by by three and a quarter and you can also see it, it, it mounts to the base fairly securely but this is a smaller column right so there's there's one big difference between the the 728 VT and the PM25 so that's important to keep in mind other things that are different the now I'm not going to cover all the specs because you can get on the, the Precision Matthews website and and look at all the different specs. You know, this thing has more features than that one does, but uh, obviously more travel in the y-axis. This has 
eight and a half inches of fully supported travel, and I think it's like ten and a half inches uh, if you allow the table to overrun the stops or the overrun the um, the dovetails, right? So this this machine has a lot more travel. We all we all know that this this will actually keep going, right? So here again, you can get on the Precision Matthews website and check that out for all those specs. Base of the machine. So the, the physical base of this machine is about it's about 12 inches this way. See that? And what we'll call them the y-axis. It is approximately 21 inches. So the, the base the base is about 12 inches by 21 inches. Where if you come over to the Precision Matthews, the base of this machine is about 11 inches and oops, about 11 by 17 so you can you can just it kind of goes along with the fact that the 728 VT is a, a bigger machine uh, just a, a few other rough dimensions I know this is something people have been asking me the, uh, the footprint of the stand you know I'm, I'm just going to measure the top the, the chip tray to give you an idea the footprint of the, the stand is about 21 and a half by, well, let's just say 24 and three quarter. So that, for those of you that are asking questions about the workbench and all that, the chip, that's how big the physical chip uh, pan is. As far as uh, floor space, here again, this is not going to be super scientific. But we'll just do this. This will give you an idea. And I'm just going to go until it stops. Please make sure I don't hit anything. Camera person. How far will she go? Okay. So let's just say right there. Okay, so fully extended. Let's just call that the center of the machine. So it's about, from the center of the machine, it's literally almost exactly 30 inches. So you could double that. So basically you need, you need to give yourself 60 inches. You need to give yourself at least 60 inches for this machine when you're setting up your work area because that would pretty much be tip of the handle either way. So I'm going to say your, your footprint for this machine, if you need to, if you need to define a, a rectangle on the floor, the space this thing takes, you need about 60 inches by, oh, I'm going to say 60 by 30 just to play it safe. So if, if you're looking for your your layout on the floor, figure about 60 by 30, and you'd have room for this machine. Let's see. Other things that people ask that you can't figure out from the website. I'm gonna give you, the, the last thing I'm gonna do is, in my opinion, maybe one of the most telling uh, characteristics of these bench top type of mills. And I wasn't quite sure how I was going to uh, quantify this, but I think I have a method. So the, re the reason why I want it, this machine, uh, other than the fact that it has you know, more features, uh, more spindle RPM, things like that, you don't really have to modify this machine as much when you go to do your CNC conversion. That's one of the reasons. But probably the, the biggest reason I wanted this machine is because it's just... Uh, a little bigger, a little batter, and a little bit stiffer. So let's let's go to the PM25 and I'll show you what we're going to do. Um, and it, you're going to you're going to need to zoom in on the indicator here at, at not at some point. I still need to. You're going to see what's going to happen. So, so this is a great machine. There's nothing wrong with these PM25s. If if this is the machine you can afford, buy this machine. It's a great machine. You can convert it to CNC, you can use it manually. It's awesome. But every machine has its limitations. They all 
you know, they all have a point at which you can't push them. All of these benchtop mills, what I find to be is the rigidity of the column. So in the y-axis, they're pretty good. They're all pretty good. But when you're, you're cutting in the x-axis, right, you, you have this big moment arm here. And what you're, what you're doing is you're applying a force that makes the column twist. Um, so you have to work within that limit. So what I've done here, I'm, I'm going to try to show you the difference between this machine and the PM728. What I've done, extremely technical, I've taken a bungee cord and I've tied a piece of rope to it so I can extend it kind of the same length and get approximately the same force. So this is my, my, my uh, method of applying a force to this. I'm going to hook, I'm going to hook this on the top of the um, uh, spindle housing here and I'm going to apply a force and I, I have this thing, it's about 11 half inches from the surface of the table to the, I'm going to call the, the zero plane of the spindle nose up here. And I have the, uh, the other machine set about the same way. So indicator zeroed out, right? So here's, I'm going to apply a force. So as I apply this, just keep the camera on the indicator. You really need to zoom in so people can see what that indicator is doing. Okay, you got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to apply the force. And there's my force. So you can see, if you can count, that's a, half, a 5 tenths indicator, so it's one, two thou. So right there, let me go back to zero, start over. Just do it again, just for. So there we go. We have about two thou of uh, we'll call twist in the column which is not terrible now uh, we're going to go over to the other machine and do the exact same experiment so here we go and this machine I can this a little differently. The table is not, this one is not converted to CNC yet, so just kind of So let's do the same experiment. And we'll do it a few times just to... Okay, here we go. So I've applied the same force. And you can see, instead of two thou, what do I have? I have about one and a half thou. Right? Re-zero this thing. Well, let's say one thou. Let's call it one thou, and that's that's uh, about the number I was expecting. So the other machine we had about two thou of displacement. This machine has one thou of displacement when it's when the same force is applied. Uh, okay, we're done. We're done at the indicator, so you can turn it back on me. So. I know this is not scientific, and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get a bunch of comments about how I've done this maybe not the best way, and there's better ways to do it, and that's fine. But this, this was the quickest way I could prove the point. And well, basically, what I've kind of, in my very unscientific and formal way, what I've determined is, in my opinion, I, I believe this column is about twice as rigid as the PM25. And that kind of plays out when I, when I apply the same force, I'm seeing about half as much displacement on this column as we did on that one. Um, so that to me is the most telling thing about these bench top mills is when you you know you compare this. This is um, not a big deal for some people, right? If, if you're not really worried about holding super, super, super tight tolerances, 
then it's no big deal if you have that displacement. But the tighter the tolerances that you're trying to hold, uh, the more rigid you want the column to be. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted this machine because uh, in addition to all the other features, it's just it's bigger, heavier, more rigid. All right, um, that's, that's about the best I can do. I hope that answered a lot of the questions that, uh, that you guys have been sending to me. If you have other questions about the comparison between the machines, uh, shoot, leave me some comments in this video. I'll try to cover them in upcoming videos, but like I said, both great machines. Uh, they, they're in different price points. If the PM25 is all you can afford, it's a great machine. You're going to love it. If you have a little bit more money to spend, this is a great machine. You're going to love it. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.